This is King Henry VIII, and this is Hampton Court, his leisure palace and one of the most luxurious mansions in history. Today, we're going to be building a miniature version of the gatehouse. This is Nar Makes. Let's get started. I'll be building this in roughly 187 scale, or HO if you're familiar with model train scales. This size was mostly just a happy accident as I was planning this project to fit on this 4 foot wide MDF board as a base. Before starting assembly, I took my time and sketched out all the rough shapes in Blender to get an idea of the proportions of the gatehouse. This lets me mock up the pieces of cardboard I'll be cutting to form the skeleton of the building. And maybe someday I'll take the time to build the rest of the palace, but as you can see it's massive compared to the gatehouse, which is going to be quite large as it is. The trick to getting precise cuts with cardboard is scoring it slightly on the first pass and then deepening the cut with two or more deliberate passes. I take the time to square off all the pieces I cut, which will play a huge role in how the building fits together in the end. We don't want this thing to be leaning to one side. I'm mostly using wood glue to get these all together with a bit of painter's tape to hold it in place as it dries. Wood glue actually cures sufficiently for handling in about an hour and it forms a really strong bond on paper and wood materials. I take a bit of time to cut out the main gate at this step because we're going to have a tunnel going all the way through the building. When I need a bit more speed in holding the pieces together, I resort to a bit of hot glue. Oh yeah, this is probably my favorite part of the build when it actually starts looking like something real. I get a lot of glue coverage with the base now so that everything's going to be sturdy and won't come loose on me. I did want to elevate the walkway entrance section a bit so I quickly ripped a bit of XPS insulation foam to size on my hot wire cable. The gatehouse has this sort of fake moat thing on either side so this would be a good way to imply that. Time to work on those iconic octagonal towers flanking the gate. There are two sets of them with the wider ones on the outside. I fiddled with several methods of constructing them, but I found that placing the strips upright worked a bit better than just pre-rolling this sort of log thing. For assembling these, I mainly use super glue since I want it to be set in place rather quickly. I followed a similar process for the interior towers, having to cut out some cardboard here and there to accommodate the bulk. Because the backside won't really be visible as displayed on a shelf, I opted to just use some rough cut strips of XPS foam for the pillars here. We just need them visible in the back. For some of the finer structural details, I exported some 2D drawings from Blender to cut on my laser. These are going to make up the decorative battlements at the top. In addition to that, I also took the time to add the roof slope in with some straight cut pieces of cardstock. And at about this point, it was time to think about the bricks. I took some time to see the relative size of the bricks on the actual building and got the measurements down in Illustrator. Then with some copy and pasting and array modifiers, I expanded this brick texture to fill a full sheet of this black EVA foam. This engraves like butter on the laser, it's going to give us a really nice texture. While we wait for these sheets to cut, let me tell you a bit about the inspiration for the build and this week's sponsor, Inkblot Press. They're promoting their latest book of the Royal Court series, Ladies Defiance, which takes place at the very location we're building in the video. The book centers around Mary Howard, the dutiful daughter of the infamous Duke of Norfolk. Throughout the story, Mary's plunged directly into the intrigue at the court of King Henry VIII. Anne R. Bailey fills in the gaps left by historians, giving a voice to Mary at a troubling time in the Tudor's troubled legacy. You can grab the book on Amazon for your e-reader or as a physical book and enjoy the dive into the intrigue at the court of King Henry VIII. Now back to the build. Take a look at how that came out. Fantastic. This pattern sheet is going to make up the bulk of the building facade, and I set out to measure and cut panels out of my brick textured foam, enough to clad all the front facing walls. I even made myself a little template to see where the trim pieces and windows would go on later. This helped make sure I placed everything mostly level. The building has a lot of horizontal trim that needs to be measured and cut on the spot, and this probably took up most of the bulk of the build.
Before I get further, I also sprayed the inside of the gate with black since I likely wouldn't be able to reach in there later. While finishing up the rest of the brickwork, I wanted to also print out some smaller details like windows, tower toppers, as well as these intricate chimneys you see on top of the building. I found some decent reference images of these and modeled them in Blender as best as I could. While these details look complex when you boil it down, they're just a series of geometric shapes layered on top of each other. For the chimneys, I didn't actually add any sort of brick texture on them since I'd be simulating a stone type texture with my paint job later. Oh, adding that center bay window really sells the look. I actually had quite a bit of fun making the coat of arms sculpture on the front. It's a very crude set of blobs, but looks quite convincing from a foot or so away. For the windows, I fit them in place and actually cut into the EVA foam here. That way they'd be countersunk in place. This gives a lot more realistic dimension to the building. I added more pieces of XPS foam to bulk out the roof where the chimneys would go. And I also dry fit my tower toppers and other printed details at this stage too. For the battlements, it was easier to just apply a flat piece of brick face and then cut out the excess with a hobby knife once the glue had dried. This gets really clean lines with the structure, but I had to make sure I changed my blade often. In order to get the roof detailed, I did a similar approach as with the bricks. But this time, I cut out long strips of teeny tiny shingles out of some poster board. This took a lot more time to lay out, but with some patience, I managed to fill the full roof with shingles eventually. Continuing on, as you can see, there's a lot more details to go. These pillar-like protrusions stick out every two blocks of crenellation. So I'm marking those out and I'm using a bit of tacky glue to fix them in place all over the top of the building. All of the rest of the windows got added in at this point too. Same process as the center. And with more chipboard strips, I also cleaned up the tops of the battlements as well as the roof line here. These top trim pieces add a very clean look to the otherwise ragged appearance. Now, remember how I mentioned there's a quasi bridge on the entrance over the moat? Well, I couldn't leave it as a straight up slab of stone. So I designed some decorative sidings and ridges for it. Didn't need a whole lot, just a few off cut pieces. And we're gonna be adding some pebbles for textures a bit later to simulate a well trodden path into the palace. I'll be painting the chimneys separately from the main structure. So I made each of them a chipboard base and we'll mount them on later. Oh, and for the actual shingled roof section, we need a few raised areas that meet flush with the slope. So I cut out some more XPS foam to fit the profile. Sweet, look at this thing. I guess it doesn't look like much yet, but wait until we paint it up. Before we do that, I'm gonna quickly apply a layer of plaster mixed with black gesso to act as gap filler for the corners. This is also a great time to add a bit of texture to the entrance gateway. This is some coarse stone sealed in with isopropyl alcohol and some watered down Mod Podge. Once dry, let's take this out to the garage to spray prime. I'm starting with a general gray prime on all the parts I want unified, and then I'm coming in with a bright engine red to give a good starting base for the brickwork. Remember, the building is mostly red. To tone it down a bit, I'm desaturating it with some off-white, mostly from above in a spotty coverage. Priming it in this way will save a lot of work and give a lot of texture to the building for not a lot of time investment. Now, taking this back inside, I wanted to show you something cool I got recently. This is the portable painting case from Frontier Wargaming, customized with my logo. Inside there's laser cut boxes and trays that fit most of my miniature paints and brushes, and it even has a little built-in light. They haven't paid me anything to say this, but there's a coupon code linked in the description if you want to add two free modules to your order if you decide to buy one of these. Alright, now to place our miniature onto the convenient painting service here. Perfection. 
When do things stop being miniatures again? <laughs> From here, my paint job is fairly straightforward. I'm using an airbrush to get some quick accent colors on the bricks, like orange and burgundy, as well as tinting the chimneys, the roof, and starting to highlight all the trim work. One trick for unifying large surfaces and getting a lot of contrast is using a dark wash to seep in all the crevices and add some great shadows. I wipe away any excess on the flat surfaces and let this dry before continuing. Taking a bit more care now to highlight all the trim pieces in off-white. And yeah, this step probably takes the longest, but it's well worth it. After painting in the base with black, I think this thing is pretty much done. All right, all right, hold up. So I showed this to my daughter and she asked me one very pointed question. Where are the windows? And you know, she's right, I, I missed a step. Let's gently tilt this thing on its back and then mix up some dark blue ink and clear 3D printer resin. Using a pipette, I gently drop some of the resin into each window, letting it settle and curing it with a UV flashlight. Oh yeah, that's looking good. And now we are truly done with this. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video and want to support me making more like them, the best way to do that is through Patreon. I post almost daily updates on my Patreon Discord and always find some time to answer questions and engage with lovely people. These videos would not be possible without your support. Thank you. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.